not play to our best abilities. Um, it's disappointing for all of us. I know how much our kids care about playing the game the right way and playing for the program. And uh, We'll get better and we'll be back and uh, hopefully play a little bit better. Questions for players? Uh, for, for both of you, um, you know, upperclassmen, it's uh, seeing the program high. What do you just take from the, from this for the, for the program going forward? Well, for me at least, you know, being a part of this program, being a part of the Omaha kind of era and being the national seed, the program's come a really long way. I know just uh, from just a field standpoint, we start playing on a little dirt field, a little high school field. Now, big time, I think we've really done our best to try and put Indiana on the national spotlight. And, Hopefully, uh, Coach Lamont's here can continue that for years to come. Yeah, um, coming from someone who grew up in Bloomington and seeing how this program literally has come from zero to nothing, uh, it's pretty cool to see. Uh, I, was, I wasn't on the team in 2013, but it was kind of cool to uh, watch and, and, and kind of see from the outside in how, how the players' um, attitudes changed, how the players' work ethics changed. And then to be a part of it and, and to see it see it in action and, and, and have those leaders like the Kyle Schwarber and the Sam Travis really mold it into our heads, mold it into our minds, mold it into our work ethic. And um, I, I hope we did that to the younger kids this year. So just not much to take, you know, just what in the way that Brian, you know, pitched for them, I'll trade for Maryland. Oh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess can you guys maybe as pitchers yourself, can you speak to just how he was doing, you know, what you saw of him? Well, he was just moving the ball around in the zone really well, just working with his fastball. You know, he just commanded it in and out of the zone and just throwing us uh, off speed for a strike and just confusing our hitters and tying off the knots and, you know, pitched really well. No more to say. Yeah, hats off to him. He was getting ahead in counts. Um, wasn't really giving the, the hitters uh, too much to hit there. But, uh, you know, it wasn't really our day, but hats off to him. Any more questions for players? Thanks, guys. We'll take questions for Coach Lamonis now. I know you only had this class for two years, but I mean, it's a program changing class for you know, bringing out of baseball for Big Ten. Uh, can you speak to kind of going into the program with the unknown and what you experienced being a coach these guys the last two years? I, you know, I said it when I first got the job, I was so fortunate to take over a, a program and a locker room of great character. Kids and kids knew how to play the game the right way, and we just spoke about that in left field of, uh, to our seniors about keeping their heads high because they, had, you know, a lot of these kids had helped put Indiana baseball on the map. Um, and that's our goal to continue it. But I just, you know, from last year's class with all the seniors, this year's class with all the seniors, it's, uh, it's been a special group of kids, and I feel privileged to be able to coach them. Um, it's one of the reasons we were able to play the way we did most of the years. Uh, maybe not the most talented team, but a team that played the game the right way and showed up and did their work and, and played it extremely hard. Coach, after seeing what Marty Costas did to you guys in the game on Wednesday, what was kind of the plan to attack him today? Do you think it was executed well? No, we missed, uh, especially in the first, just missed a spot. And that's what we're sitting there. Um, we were trying not to let him beat us, and I think we missed a spot a couple times on him over the weekend. And, Credit to a good hitter. When you get a pitch to hit, he drove them every time. And so, uh, not a great job on our part. Uh, Evan Bell's been been outstanding all year for us, but just just missed a pitch there in that at bat. I just spoke to what the seniors means to the program, but uh, it's a good week for Luke Miller. You know, you saw some promise out of the some of your younger players. Is that a positive take into the offseason? Well, I think so. I mean, we had three freshmen on the all freshman team, a couple pitchers, other pitchers nominated. Um, good recruiting class coming in. Um, we're excited about the future, um, but it's just always, you know, I, I really think the biggest part is is getting some of our current players to play a little bit higher of a level. Um, and they've had good years, but when you have a great year, is when you win the league and, and go to regionals and super regionals in Omaha, and we need our kids to play at a little higher level. Is that all any, any benefit? I mean, you never want your season to end here, but. And not that you guys don't know, but it's the quality of the Big Ten. I mean, you can't just show up every year. You just can't roll out the balls. I mean, just you got to step up to that level. Every day. Every day in the Big Ten is a uh, – and that's what it's become. And, and just from facilities and, and TV games and, and playing here in Omaha for your tournament and just the quality of coaches in our league and now the quality of players coming to our league, um, it's a different Big Ten than it was a decade ago. You may not be able to answer this in the moment, but you, know, you did finish third in the league. Everyone has a plenty of Kevin one, but is there, I mean, is there a way to match?
map it out in the future to put yourself in a better position, I guess, I guess RPI wise. I don't, I don't know if you can if you can control it at all, but you know, finish and turn in, in a league like the Big Ten, you, you feel like you should be in consideration for a regional. You would think you'd have a shot. And, and last year we were here and we were jumping 15 points a game that we won here. I think we beat Nebraska the other day and we moved up three points. You know, and that's, it's just always not about who you play that day. It's what all the other teams you've played on your schedule have played. Yeah. Uh, it's very hard because I'm looking at next, we are, we're already done almost through 2018. And so it's hard to say who's going to be good, who's going to be bad, who you're going to get in your Big Ten schedule to map that out. So it's a, it's one of the hardest things as a head coach to do from, I think the biggest side may be a schedule. And then just taking care of the number one component of the RPI is winning. Yeah. So if you just win, um, you're fine. And we had some bad losses early that hurt us before we figured our team out. But um, but we, we are always looking at it. We're trying to figure it out. I just don't, it's just hard to figure out. Right. The, the, the change of it though, like three years ago, is that? A little bit. It, it should help out the Midwest Northern teams yeah. more, that the, the change, but it's just, you know, you got to take care of your business too. The way the season ended, is it, I'm going to say a head scratcher, but just kind of trying to figure out just why the, the spark wasn't there. You know, um, yeah, it was just tough. I mean, as a coach, you're trying to, you know, get your team to play relaxed and loose at the end. And we did have a couple injuries. We lost uh, Tony Butler about 10 days ago, who was a, maybe not our most talented player, but one of our spark plugs and leaders of our team. Um, Colby Stratton did an unbelievable job in filling in for him uh, over that time. But just, you know, we just got banged up a little bit and, and didn't play well. And sometimes it's, uh, you know, back to the drawing board and try to do it a little bit better the next time. Coach, between Mike Schwarm on Wednesday and Brian Shaver, Brian Shaver this afternoon, who do you think had the better stuff and or the better start? I, I, it's hard to say because <laughs> they were both really good. Um, but boy, Shaver, he just commanded all day. I mean, he just never seemed to lose it. Whereas Mike, is dominant. Mike was so dominant in the first four or five innings, but Shaper held it all the way through. Um, you know, 16 strikeouts or a shutout, complete game shutout. I think it's a coin flip. Any more questions for Coach? You know, Coach, you talked about RPI and scheduling and things like that, the importance of that, but the importance of what you do as a coach is your ability to recruit. And I wonder if, you, if you're confident that your last four or five years of the program has now made Indiana baseball the number one object of every high school, you know, really good high school player in the state of Indiana because you play good high school baseball. We do. We do. Our, our state of um, baseball in the, in the state of Indiana is, is really high. We've made it a priority. We have some of the top recruiting classes in the country, you know, signed to come up. And I just always hate to put the future on the next guy, which I know it is in recruiting. Um, <laughs> My, my basis of most of my career has been in the recruiting world, so we're excited about that side. I mean, we really feel feel like we have a good group coming, um, and groups behind it. Recruiting so early this day and age, the groups behind it also. But um, we got to get them here and coach them up and, and get them to play at their highest level. We take a lot of pride in player development. And I think that's the side that we really have to excel in.